I was sitting in a conference uh, probably about 1961, and it was a conference on computer graphics, primitive as it was then. And um, I think I got bored at the kind of way they were dealing with it because, you know, it was going to get interactive and they should realize that more. And uh, so I carried in my pocket all the time a little little notebook. And so I, I just got to thinking about what they were trying to do. So I realized that, you know, pointing at the screen was always going to be important. And, oh, so I got an idea and I got on my little notebook and wrote it down. It just suddenly occurred to me, why don't I get a, put wheels in two, two directions and get them on a device like this and move it around and each wheel gets registered the computer is how far you move up and down or how far you move sideways. That would be great. So that just went in that notebook. As we were getting the things set up and the very bright engineer working with me was getting the different equipment and we had our display, computerized display that we'd assembled because we were intent on having interactive computing processes. In some place between the time it was getting designed and was winning the tests, somebody noticed it sitting there, I think, with a little ear and a tail coming out the side and said, called it a mouse. But I wasn't the kind of person that that uh, just, that made up the names for what we're going to call it. Just, oh, just a gadget. <laughs> and uh, nobody can remember among all the people who were involved in that who first started calling it a mouse. But that name just stuck. And we all assumed later it was going to win when the world got interested in working computer interactions that that would be a good contender. But of course it would have a sort of a, uh, an official dignified name when it got out to the world. <laughs> and, uh, but it was almost 20 years later before, that was 1963, and uh, it was quite a few years before the world wanted to start using it.